Namaskaram, everybody. It's been a long while since I met you on the Massage and Message platform. And today is an opportune moment because it's the start of what is known as Agni Nakshatram. Agni Nakshatram is a 24-day period every year happening in the month of May from the first week of May to the last week of May so it's pretty much the entire month of May which you know as this peak summer in most parts of India as well as many parts of the northern hemisphere where most of the countries of the world are situated. Now what is the significance of Agni Nakshatra, which some people call it as a dosha, I prefer not to, and some people call it in Tamil as Kattiri Veil, means a summer heat which is as sharp as a pair of scissors. Well, it's true, especially in Tamil Nadu, in Sri Lanka, where most of the Tamilians live. It's indeed the hottest month, as if the other months are not so hot. This is indeed quite um, the peak of the summer. But there's far more significance to this Agni Nakshatram than what meets the eye. In fact, it's very precisely defined as the period during which from an earth fixed reference frame, the sun is seen to be in the background of the Pleiades and slightly before and after that. More specifically, in terms of the 27 constellations that the zodiac is divided into. Yes, the very same zodiac which is divided into 12 signs of 30 degrees each is also divided into 27 nakshatras or constellations of 13 degrees and 20 minutes each. And that further, each nakshatra is divided into four quarters of 3 degrees and 20 minutes each, so that there are a total of 108 padas or quarters of the constellations and these 108 multiplied by 3 degrees and 20 minutes gives rise to 360 degrees. Actually, the degree is not a very precise measurement of angle of any significance, it's an approximation. What should have been an entire circle should have been what is the total number of days on earth revolving around the sun to give us a year, that is 365, which was approximated to be 360 as a full circle, so that each degree is actually slightly different from what it's functionally supposed to be. Nonetheless, let's come back to Agni Nakshatram. The reason why I introduced you to the concept of the constellations and their quarters is that the scriptures define Agni Nakshatram very precisely as the period during which the sun as seen from the earth is in the background of, it has in its background the Kritika Nakshatra in its entirety as well as half of the Bharani Nakshatra which is the nakshatra preceding 
Krithika and a quarter of the Rohini nakshatra which is the nakshatra following Krithika. So this is like Krithika which is a fiery nakshatra and therefore Agni is its ruler or Devata while the ruler being Sun the hottest of the nine grahas or consumers and having two padas that is half of Bharani nakshatra prior to it is like ignition of that fire and one pada of the Rohini nakshatra following Kritika is like an afterburner. Those of you who are familiar with turbojet engines, especially for fighter aircraft, are familiar with the concept of an afterburner after the combustion chamber. So the combustion chamber is pretty much like the Kritika nakshatra. The afterburner is the first pada of the Rohini nakshatra. That's just one quarter of a nakshatra, three degrees in 20 minutes. While the Bharani nakshatra, the latter half of it, that is two padas or two quarters, just prior to the Kritika nakshatra, is like an ignition. Ignition, combustion, and afterburner. So all of these put together, two padas of Bharani, four padas, that is almost the end entire Kritika, not almost, the entire Kritika, and one quarter of Rohini makes it two plus four plus one, seven Padas, or seven quarters out of the 108 that the sun traverses throughout the year. So in this cycle of 108 quarters that it traverses in its background as seen from the earth in the celestial sphere as precisely observed by telescopes located on the earth seven of those hundred and eight are the ones where the sun is supposed to be exalted what does this mean the sun is the source of all forms of energy on earth be it the heat, the light, or even the fossil fuels that we get were fossilized primarily because of the sun long back. And every form of electricity that we generate or heat that we generate on earth using engineering is also in some way traced backwards towards the source, the sun. And the sun itself, in turn, the entire solar system is moving around in the universe. It's not static. And in doing so, we see that the axis of rotation of the earth, the precession axis as we call it, creates a cycle of somewhere between 20,000 to 30,000 years. Now, in doing so, the very first nakshatra reference has moved from being Kritika to start with, backwards to Bharani and now to Ashwini. So we say the start of the year is on April the 14th or 15th, mid-April basically, which is known as the Chittirai month in summer, when sun enters Aries in the tropical zodiac as opposed to the sidereal one and then after traversing through Ashwini and half of Bharani it reaches the second half of Bharani which is today and that's when the Agni Nakshatram starts essentially the peak summer because the earth, like all other planets, 
has an elliptical orbit around the sun as one of its focal foci points and it is in closest proximity to the sun and therefore the hottest period for the people in the northern hemisphere of the earth due to the tilt of the earth's axis because of the precession that I mentioned earlier. Now this is very beautifully brought out in terms of allegories in the Puranas. It's also mentioned in the Vedas, the 27 nakshatras. The Puranas talk about Durvasa Maharishi by which we actually mean, Dur means that which is not desirable and Vasa means who resides in that which is not desirable. Essentially people who are having bad company or who are interacting with people who are mostly Rajasic and Tamasic. So that's what Durvasa literally means, but he is a Maharishi. In spite of living amongst them, just like a lotus, he is a Maharishi, a great seer. And this great seer performs a yajna or a homa for about 12 years, offering a lot of ghee into the fire, which is agni, and essentially what that means is that Agni gets bloated up and needs certain medicinal herbs. And for Agni to consume medicinal herbs essentially means burning up those regions where these herbs grow, typically forests. And in particular, one forest which it needs to burn. But Varuna would not allow that, causing rains to protect the trees, plants, and also the various fauna, that is the animals and other lives, like insects, which live in the same forest. So then Agni pleads with Krishna that it needs to redeem itself, heal itself with these medicinal herbs. And therefore, Krishna asks Arjuna, the son of Indra, to create an umbrella of arrows through which rain wouldn't seep through but telling Agni that he has just 24 days to self-heal himself with these herbs from the forest. So then, for these 24 days, when the sun traverses as seen from the earth through the two quarters of Varani, four quarters of Kritika and one quarter of Rohini, during the seven quarter transition out of the 108, Agni gets a chance to burn up the forest. And you see that most of the forest fires actually happen during this period. And essentially, it's a self correction in nature that nothing can go beyond its own boundaries, up to a certain threshold it's allowed, but once it crosses that, then a self-correction mechanism ensures that other living beings are not suffering because of this. But more pertinently, as is always the case with our channel Katam.in or our sister channels of Srimati Vasanta Kumari Sampad or Dinesh Kumar Harur Sampad. In all of these, 
we try to go into a much deeper interpretation of direct relevance to us. So here we need to see what Agni and Varuna mean. Agni is something which is also happens to be one of the Panchabhutas and the Panchabhutas occupy the first five of our higher chakras that is the Muladhara, Swadishtana, Manipura, Anahata and Vishuddhi. Out of these, Agni occupies the Manipuraka chakra right behind our navel, signifying the digestion that takes place over there. Now, you see the parallel in the uh, allegory. It is Agni who is being offered the food. What it means when we eat our food, it goes to the digestive system which is around our navel region and where the digestive fire engulfs this food to create nutrition for us. Whereas the Swadishtana Chakra, a couple of inches below the Manipura Chakra, is the seat of the second grossest of the elements, which is water, the grossest being earth at the Muladhara, which is solid food and excretion, whereas at the Swadishtana is the place for Varuna, Ganga, Yamuna, Saraswati, Sindhu, Kaveri, Narmada, Tripti, Godavari, Khabini, Svatika, Saravana Poigai, Thamara Bharani, Siruvani, all these wonderful rivers of Bharat and the rivers of various other countries as well. Now, we quench our thirst as well as the fire through the Swadishthana Chakra Sadhanas. And that's essentially Varuna trying to put off the fire. But the fire cannot be put off, at least for certain duration. Neither should we eat throughout the day, nor should we fast throughout the year. There are certain periods for fasting. So, essentially when we have overfed, which is what happens in springtime, thanks to all the festivities, where we have lots of company, which is what we call as Durvasa, and in spite of these festivities having a perceptivity of clarity behind them, which is what is the reason behind Durvasa being a Maharishi and performing the Agnya or Homa for Agni, which is essentially consuming lots of yummy food during these festivities. And now, is a period of 24 days of heat trying to redeem itself after all its consumption and that's essentially what the Agni Nakshatram period means. Isn't it a wonderful allegory for us to remember the scientific and spiritual truths? Now, is far more significant than that. It is the sun traversing the Kritika nakshatra and the sun which is at our right eye in the subtle body and the moon which is at the left eye in the subtle body get exalted or reach their maximum prowess when the sun is in the Aries and the moon is in Taurus or Rishabha, more precisely in the Rohini nakshatra. And it's the time during which the sun is almost exalted and the moon is exalted too, which we call as the Akshaya Tritiya, and term which all of you are familiar with, especially those of you who are shoppers, because 
that's the day when it said to be great to shop, especially for gold. But that's a very recent happening. It's not for shopping kind of a consumption, but for charity or generosity of giving things which you want to grow in your life. For example, we share knowledge or wisdom, our own knowledge and wisdom multiplies and fold. That's essentially what it means. Whatever you give, you receive in plentitude. That's the concept of the Akshaya Patra as well as Akshaya Tritiya. Tritiya being Mundram Virai or the third day of the moon after Amavasya or new moon where the moon has coincided with the sun as seen from the earth on Amavasya and the third day is just when it has moved slightly and therefore after being invisible during the Amavasya it appears in a very beautiful crescent shape on this particular day. And this Akshaya Tritya is very critical to Agni Nakshatram period of 24 days because it falls right in between. That's the 12th day of Agni Nakshatram or the 13th day. It falls around that. And when the moon is in Rohini Nakshatra of the Rishabharashi and the sun is in the Kritika Nakshatra also of Rishabharashi because one pada of Kritika is in Mesha but the other three are in the Rishabharashi. So it's just entered that and the moon is just past it and what this essentially means is that the left eye and the right eye of the subtle body are essentially our self, atma or soul which is represented in a conformal mapping outwardly by the sun and the mind which is the left eye of the subtle body, our subtle body and that mind is represented in a conformal mapping externally by the moon. So you see both the mind and the soul, the true self that is, are exalted in the sense that they are most potent. Yes, Rohini Nakshatra passage of the moon happens once a month, but this particular passage throughout the year of 12 to 13 passages is most significant because at the same time, our soul is also exalted or most potent, most accessible to our sadhana. So that's essentially what Akshaya Tritya actually means, is that any sadhana done on that particular day, and in particular seva and dhana, multiply n fold both for the giver and the receiver and that's essentially this entire period of Agni Nakshatram which is conducive to that peaking on the Akshaya Tritya and once again reducing the next 12 days. Now what's so special about this particular month can be seen by the number of birthdays of the greatest of great people including Adi Shankaracharya, his Shankara Jayanti falls during the Agni Nakshatram period, immediately after the Akshaya Tritya. On the day of Akshaya Tritya, it is Basava Jayanti, that is the greatest of the seers from Karnataka, arguably. Basavanna, his birthday is on Akshaya Tritya. Nimishamba, Kanyaka Parameshwari, Vasavi, these great shaktis or energy forms of about which I have written in detail in Katam.n. 
were all born during this period. Their Jayantis fall there. The Jayanti of Varaha, which is the third of the Dashavatar series after Batsya and Kurma, Varaha avatar of the boar, which is the wild pig avatar, the first of the mammal avatars, the grossest and most earthy in nature. Varaha Jayanti is during this period. Narasimha Jayanti is during this period. That is half man, half lion. Therefore, just prior to a full human birth of Parshurama. So that falls during this period. Parshurama Jayanti falls during this period. The first of the human evolution. And a phenomenal number of other Jayantis which fall in the proximity of the Agni Nakshatram period. Just after Agni Nakshatram is Narada Jayanti. Ganga Jayanti or Ganga Saptami is during the Agni Nakshatram itself. And I can go on. Does this mean that generally lots of births happen during May? No. In fact, to the contrary, if you look at the data, both in India as well as abroad, it's usually September which registers the maximum number of births. It can vary a little bit, August to October, but September is usually the peak of the maximum number of births that take place. In other words, most people have their birthdays on September, in the month of September. Whereas the least number of births is during April, May. And therefore, it's only the greatest of the greats, or at least those who have potential to become the greatest of the greats, who are born in May. So all those of you in the audience who are having birthdays in May, give yourself a pat in the back, because you have that potential. Whether you realize that potential or not, of course, is left up to you. How much of sadhana you take part in and how quickly you evolve. You have a great potential being born in during this particular period, but every one of us, irrespective of when our birthday is, has this every year. These 24 days of Agni Nakshatram, this year from May 4th to May 28th, but always in the first week of May to the last week of May. It might slightly sometimes spill over to June, but mostly it's the entire month of May that we're talking about. And mid-May, around which Akshya Tritiya happens, is when all of this peaks out. So let's take the fullest advantage of this wonderful scenario in order to increase whatever we would like to increase through sharing that precisely with others who need it far more than us. It could be knowledge, it could be wisdom, it could be food, it could be money, more importantly it could be skill training so that those people can get jobs for themselves and therefore earn the money rather than depend on charity forever. So all these possibilities are greatly enhanced during this period and we can reap all of that. Most importantly, we talked about Agni burning up the forest, a small part of the forest to quench his thirst after a very heavy meal with Durvasa. What this essentially means is that our digestion or digestive fire needs to be given a rest. And that's happening at his own position of our Manipura Chakra. And that also brings in the concept of Varuna at the Swadishtana Chakra, aiding in this process that the fiery nature of Agni doesn't destroy the entire forest. So there is a check on that, so that this 24-day period comes to an end as well. 
so that the rest of the year can be allotted to various other aspects and dimensions of our lives. So with this, I'd like to conclude. My massage chair has finished its massage as well. The cycle of 30 minutes. So I wish you a very fiery and thirst quenching Agni Nakshatram period. Yes, it's too hot outside. And in this particular year, it's lockdown time in many parts of India. And so you have an opportunity to stay away from the, not only the virus, but also the heat. So stay indoors during the hot afternoons. Do not consume too much of food. Consume more of fluids which are cooling down in nature rather than heating you up like coffee and tea more of fruit juices etc and you're going to have a wonderful time indeed recuperating not only your health but becoming more conducive to your sadhana achieving its goal of mukti moksha and nirvana that is liberation from the cycle of birth death and rebirth there's a lot more that i can continue talking about this but perhaps at the next opportunity aum saravana bhavaya namaha aum kritika nakshatraya namaha aum shri bhasaveshwaraya namaha Aum Shri Adi Shankaracharya Yenamaha Aum Shri Varahavatara Yenamaha Aum Shri Narasimhavatara Yenamaha Aum Shri Narada Maharishya Yenamaha Aum Shri Kanyaka Parameshwar Yenamaha Aum Shri Vasavi Devyai Namaha Aum Shri Nimishambhayai Namo Namaha Aum Shri Agnaye Idam Namama Aum Shri Agnaye Swaha that the Manipura Chakra is also representative of the Mesha Rashi apart from Rishika Rashi both of which belong to Mar, Kuja, Mangala, Angaraka, Sedvai as we call them. The second of the hottest planets or Grahas and that's why it's a red planet and Ketu being another fiery Graha. Surya Angaraka and Ketu are the three fi most fiery ones. Almost this particular time, this particular year, apart from the sun being in the 
House of Mars, which is Aries or Mesha. Soon he'll be aspected as he moves to Rishabha by Ketu and given company off by Rahu and that leading to a Chandra Grahana during the Amavasya, three days before Akshaya Tritya as well. So that's another great thing happening this particular Agni Nakshatra. So there's lots to benefit from for those of us who are spiritually inclined and who are sadhaks pursuing our sadhana. Let's deepen that. Utilize the lockdown. Utilize the hot summer to get into your own caves. Both the external cave of the home as well as the internal cave to access Guru Guha at our Swadishtana Nakshatra or Swadishtana which represents that chakra which represents the possibilities of Shukra and wherein the moon will be exalted as well on Akshaya Tritya. You can experience all of these right here within your body by mapping your physical body to the subtle body and then to the causal body which is the cosmic nature and then to the solar system as well. So all of these are completely related and the real thing is actually happening within us. And all of these that we observe astronomically are all projections of that interiority. Whether we recognize that or not, that's the truth. Whether science has determined that or not, doesn't matter. It will sooner or later. So, till the next episode of Massage and Message, Namaskar. Again, of course, this weekend I'll see you on Srimati Basanta Kumari Sampas channel with a wonderful song on marriages or more precisely Kalyanam and most of you would have got the hint of the song what she would sing but this particular period most people go ahead with marriages during the Agni Nakshatra though it's far more conducive to do things which cannot be postponed at all marriages can be postponed anyway this weekend I'll talk to you about more about Kalyanam rather than marriage. And there's a huge distinction between that. Just giving you a hint. See you then.